<ride> Buon pomeriggio a tutti e a tutte. Eccoci all'ultima nostra puntata dei viaggi del venerdì. Mm. Oggi abbiamo un ospite da molto lontano, speciale, che ha viaggiato molto lontana e per questo oggi, anche come dedica a tutti i nostri ascoltatori al di fuori del paese, del nostro paese, la bella Italia, we're gonna talk in English. So welcome everyone again. Eh? Good afternoon. Today we have a special guest for our last Friday, let's say, interview um, project. And uh, the weather is getting better, so the time is uh, soon to go out and ride a bicycle or travel again, because actually yesterday in Italy, um, they just, yes, two days ago, they opened uh, again the borders. And it's really inspiring for me, but uh, don't go very much long on this. I'm going to introduce our guest uh, that is going to talk about her experience. So her name is Renske and Dolima on top of the world. Hello, Renske. Renske. Hello, Ellen. Ciao. Thank you for your introduction. Ciao. You're very welcome. So wh wh where do you speak from? I speak from the Netherlands, from Holland, and um, it's very rainy here actually because it's just starting changing the weather, so it's typical rainy Dutch weather. Um, and I just arrived a few days ago. I came from Portugal and I'm just back in my home country for some weeks. Great. Instead, I'm, I'm uh, on a different stage today because I'm in Trento. Um, visiting my my girlfriend and uh here it's sunny so we had rain yesterday but now it's sunny hope it's gonna be sunny soon where you are now um <laughs> what, what would you like to start so usually i i ask you something to introduce yourself and that reveal your characters okay So, yes, so I'm Renske and I am, um, okay, so I come from Holland, I'm born in the Netherlands and actually what I can tell about myself is that I move quite a lot around the world, so I don't have one place to live, I, uh, I have many places which I can call my home. Um, And my background, I, I study geography, so first of all I'm very interested in the landscapes in geography in in the world in general and i've been living in like for example in ethiopia some years in the cold russia also in your right. country in italy i go back soon yes yes and also i traveled quite a lot yeah actually most of the time in south america but yeah i also spent a long time in nepal so Yes, I would call myself very curious about the world and about uh, exploring the earth to, to be inside it, actually. <laughs> That's, awesome. Like that. That's awesome. So yes. the, the next question comes kind of automatically because you, you are telling me that you, your life, you spend your life traveling, basically. And uh, I'm curious, I'm really curious to know um, what does traveling mean to you then? Is your root normal routine? Is your way of living? Is your style of uh, living or what else? Yes, actually, you can call it like like my way of living. So it, it's for me the the term traveling is not really like maybe the uh, meaning of the general meaning of the world because uh, yeah, for me my life is more like. Um, Uh, to live, to be in different places of the earth. And I try to combine that with my work, which now is a little bit difficult, as all of us know, uh, like in tourism. 
but also I've been working in geography, but all these kind of activities took place like in some other areas of the world. So I tried out to combine to, to work and, and to live in the, in different parts of the world. And so traveling means to me more like, yeah, my life, but also like to, yeah, to learn actually to, to learn your whole life about uh, what's around us and, that became a way, I, I think also kind of addiction. And uh, for me, like to, to see something else, uh, to meet people, to speak about their backgrounds in their context. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's a big value for me to, <laughs> <laughs> to be the new discoverer. Because when I was a child, I always wanted to become explorer, like Leaping Stone, like Pasca da Gama. So now I'm trying to do that in our our modern world. <laughs> Perfect. So an addiction. You mentioned <laughs> you define that uh, like an addiction. So maybe I, I was right naming you Wanderlust a bit, uh, but this is a overwhelming uh, word. Uh, so I'm not gonna tell it anymore during the conversation. <laughs> um, any, anyway, we start having some comments from Girl Powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to good okay. afternoon from Luisa. Um, and Arisha say hello to you. Beautiful Renske. Renske. From Arisha. Um, yes, so I remind everyone who is listening, you can write questions in the comments, either you're on Facebook or any other mean. Um, of connection and I will pop up them and we can answer during the live show. So today, Renske, I think you, you, you want to start uh, telling us about one trip uh, of your many that you did across. Actually, it's a pretty recent one, I guess. Um, but, but I'll let you tell us um, what trip you want to talk about and um, a brief introduction to it. All right, okay. Yes, this trip uh, is, is uh, relatively recent. It was last year, actually, I will talk about. And it's um, in Colombia. So it's ah. actually in the Andes Mountains of Colombia. <laughs> yes. Last year it was, I have to think always when exactly, but I thought it was April, yeah. And I was working as tour leader in Colombia because it was the first time that I uh, did that specific tour, a bike and hike tour in Colombia for uh, Dutch and Belgian people. Ah, finally, so, uh, your job, actually. So you're a tour leader uh, yeah. and you do hike and mostly hike and bicycle tours. I'm correct and correct. That's correct, yes, uh, mostly, and sometimes also uh, different kind of tours, mostly nature, yeah, in different countries, mostly hike and bike. So uh, in Colombia, that was uh, that trip. And after I finished, um, it was like two and a half weeks, I decided to, to stay for a bit because I had some time in between another trip in the... Um, and Peru, and um, yeah, I so saw that time I stayed in Colombia, and I had been like reading already like years about Colombia, like always like a destination of like kind of mystery, of course, before even more, because now it's opening up. And then I was always fascinated by volcanoes in general, and I knew oh. also Colombia had a lot of volcanoes. Active volcanoes. But those volcanoes, sorry? Active volcanoes? Yeah, lots of active volcanoes. Of course, also uh, quiet dead volcanoes. But the ones I was reading about a lot were still active. And um, also in some areas that were just opening up because before it was more dangerous to go there. So I knew about um, um, Los Nevados, it's an area, it's like a, a tropical zone, starting of a tropical zone, a jungle, and going up until uh, 5,500 meters, until like the glacier uh, volcanic area. And 
I wanted to climb one of these volcanoes because, yes, if I want to do something and I read about that specific area, I just want to do it. So, <laughs> so I started. Actually, I have to say to add that uh, you, you you talk about climbing a volcano with me uh, for I think at least a year before going there. And uh, yeah. I remember you mentioning it. Yes, I would like to go and climb a volcano in South America. Yes, and another day, and then another time we 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 chat. Uh, that that's that's really nice. I mean, you you really did it this time. Yes, I, I did. Yes, exactly. And I I wanted to do that specific volcano because it was less known. It's less accessible and you have to walk. That's the most special thing. You start in like a tropical area with a lot of colibris, with snakes, very hot, very liquid. And you hike up until um, 5,215 meters. Very and... liquid. Sorry, there? Very liquid. We see your pictures in the water. Yes, yeah, really like, exactly. That that's the tropical area. So you start with that. You would just jump in like without any clothes even. You would you'd just be in a waterfall. And then after two days it starts to be very cold. Slowly colder, colder, colder. And here we go. This is another part of the Andes, actually. This is in the Patagonia in the yeah. south. Um which is also part of the whole range um, of the 9,000 kilometers of Andes Mountains. Um, but going back to Colombia, this uh, specific volcano, the Tolima, um, I hiked up with two others. We organized because it's not often done. So you have to kind of organize and to speak to the people in the town, like to find someone who can guide you because otherwise you get lost because there's nothing on the way Whoa. um and uh, also people got lost there and never and never came back um yeah so that was kind of good <laughs> so after four days of hiking um you reach uh, the zone of the uh, the altiplano the the high altitude zone so very very cool track is that it's changing all the time it's changing vegetation it's changing animals and you can see the tent this is the base camp um it's on 4700 meters more or less mm -hmm. yes of course very cold uh which is very good because it should be and then in the night at one you start climbing from there so, so you start climbing, you put on uh, your, your equipment, your ropes, um, your helmet, etc. cetera. Um, if I have something I can show about it, yes. I think, here's a rope. Here's Renske with the helmet, the light, the headlight. And the uh, round right. Yes, because yes. it was still dark. So you need a headlamp in the beginning. Yes, and then you start climbing the first part of the, the volcano top, and then slowly it becomes like lights, and you slowly start to feel your blood and your bones again because it's uh, incredible cold <laughs> at one o'clock at night. And um, then when the sun comes up, you reach the, the glacier. So you go over the rocks and you actually reach the uh, the crevasse, the um, the structures of the glacier, and then you start really climbing on the the snow and so using your uh, your your picana in Italiano, the yeah Pico. the peak of pickle. Yes, I always forget that word. Um, Yes, and that's the most exciting part because ah. at that point you're like 5,000 meter and it becomes just something which is not human really anymore. And your body is somewhere outside our area, outside our 
oxygen song. Yeah. Yes. But actually, I was so happy and I had so much adrenaline that I didn't really feel these altitudes uh, at that moment. So that was very good. And here you can see you slowly you reach the top and yes, then it starts to be like kind of heaven. <laughs> and it was uh, <laughs> yeah, that was very beautiful. Wow, that sign sounds really like uh, like a real climb. I mean, a real mountain, a real volcano, and a real big adventure. So, so we have Elisabetta that say hello to us from um, from Italy. Ciao, Elisabetta. Nice, ciao. And uh, wow, so. Um, so finally, uh, what time did you reach the top? What was what? What time was about? Uh, that was around like six thirty-seven, as I remember. Yeah. And time for breakfast. Time for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> time for actually chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you don't really feel the need to eat. At least me and many people in that altitude. So you kind of, yeah, you don't feel like your, your digestion is really not so working so well. But then chocolate is a good thing because you need some sugar to wake up. And, yeah. um, and in the end, you can see another volcano and that's one of the highest. That's Maybe the one in you front can of see the cloud. Yes, exactly. That's the one in front, yeah. I, I thought yeah, that were, I thought that that dust was clouds were clouds, but the clouds actually are below. Now that I'm watching um, in detail the image, and so what's up is smoke, right, from the volcano. Yeah, that's right. That's smoke. Yeah, because that volcano is dangerous, so you cannot climb it, and the volcano. On this picture, the top of this one, the Tolima, yeah. is still active, but it's not dangerous. So you can actually go and climb it. Not many people do it. <laughs> yeah, let's Only say. Only a few among. <laughs> <laughs> let's say, in your opinion, it is not dangerous. For me, any volcano is dangerous. <laughs> I, I, I would barely climb any volcano. Yeah, I think. Um, even in Italy, uh, that's 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 fair enough that is for me to say. Uh, all right, then, but th then I, I know um, that something happened when you were up there, right? So we come to the to the major part of the because the difficult part, I mean, the most interesting part was not the climbing actually, the actual climb, right? Yes, that's right. There was like a surprise on the top, actually, except for the few and the good feeling because you feel like you can fly actually yourself. But then I saw like in the snow somewhere, like I was just walking there actually, and I saw like some kind of like brown black thing in the snow. So I yeah. was going to look and it seemed to be like a little bird and a bird that was covered by ice. A little bird? Uh, yeah. Can you repeat the altitude you were at? This was 5,215. Wow. So there was a bird in the ice and was still alive? At that yeah, that was the if it was still alive at that point. Yeah, because it was, it had the wings in the eye. So I started to use the, the ice axe to cut it out, to duck it out without harming it indeed, because around. Yeah. And then it took, I took the birds out and it was still in ice, but it seemed to be, like alive like not really but at least a little bit it was moving but it couldn't move anyway because it was totally in ice wow. um yeah and of course the birds are not supposed to be like that in the altitude because yes 
<laughs> also for them, it's too high. Um, some birds can go really far, but this one was little and was not supposed to be there this kind. So um, it went off probably by some kind of wind stream. And I, I thought, okay, the only thing I, I can do is take it back uh, down and see if it actually uh, survives and it defrees again. Yes, so wow, that was the moment. Wow. Yeah, here you can see yeah, the in little the, birds. The rescue. Um, you have it uh, in your jacket, correct? And then, so, so you did the whole, like the whole um, trail back with the bird. Where did where did you put it? Yeah, it was a little challenging because we had to climb back, of course. And yeah. yeah, also to your body and to bend and sometimes to 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 yeah to go down yeah, on the cool. ice. So it was a little risky if that bird would even survive on my body. Yeah. But I put it in the jacket. I ha actually had two jackets, so <laughs> one. Uh, so I put it in uh, in one pocket, and um, and it was sitting there, and it was <laughs> actually. Well, a swallow, a night swallow, gondolina in, in Italiano, a night swallow. Um, so it, it was stuck there. And so I moved really slow, also with the rock climbing down yeah. to see every time if it was not stuck to keep it like, to have it some, give it some space. And yes, uh, uh, around like 4,400 meters, it started slowly to defreeze the wings. So the water started to go out of the little body. Yeah. And on 3,000 meter, it could actually move the wings again. Um, there we go. <laughs> and it was looking, looking into the world again, like a little bit, little bit scared. Yeah, I mean that that's an amazing well, an amazing adventure and an amazing picture because here we clearly see the bird the bird with uh, its its head up out from the backpack and from the jacket, sorry, yes. Ready to yes, I mean that's, right. that's amazing. That's that's insane. That's uh yeah, that's something really, really cool. So, yes, it was it was a big surprise that it was still alive. So, so she then, or he yes. came, yeah, came all the way down climbing. With you down the mountain. And then what 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 did you what did you tell it way before he flew away? Yeah, actually I have to say it was about maybe just just below three thousand meter. Then I thought it was time for him or her hair to to fly in the world again. But the thing was that uh, she was too comfortable in the jacket, so <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay, it's fine, it's nice and cozy here. I don't want to go out anymore. And there's many condors in this area, eh? Andes condors. So many big, big condors flying around as so. well. So yeah. who knows, it could have been. But anyway, I took it out, I put it on the hands. And um, yeah, I didn't want to fly, but it was ready, actually. So what is a good thing to do then is like to, to blow a little bit. So to give it some air under the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it feels like something like kind of wind and this I was trying and eventually <laughs> she took off and she went in the valley like uh, was very very small. and it went away <laughs> that's a yes. that's an amazing surprise I think I think that was an outstanding adventure so so now then then you you named her or him uh Dolima right Yes, that's right, because this volcano is called Tolima, but actually in the indigenous name, the volcano is called 
Dulima with a U, and it means like river of the snow because this volcano is still covered in snow, but used to be much more, of course. There is little part left. They say it's going to uh, be gone, uh, gone really soon, this glacier. But that's why I call there Dolima because I thought it was a good combination and yeah, proper name for, <laughs> for a good memory. <laughs> great, great. And, and what about um, your, your mates, your, the other climbers that were with you, the two other, um, how did they experience, experience this, this encounter? Yeah, that was funny because one of them uh, from Germany, he we were with three and he made actually this picture and uh, of this uh, situation. And yeah. then uh, one uh, from Canada. So um, for them also, it was like something extra. This whole trip, this whole climb was already like a beautiful adventure. Uh, really, really special, and uh, yes, yeah, something that really gives you some power. I don't know, power in the mind. You feel like you're, <laughs> yeah, you get some, I don't know, something extra um, after that, more energy, more experience. So, for them, also, this was uh, something really, really, yeah, special because a bird is also a bird is a sign of freedom as well. Eh? And in Absolutely. this case, you could actually see the bird was flying away again and was just going inside the world. And down, you could see the jungle. So you, you can see that there is a lot of life down and there is less life in case of animals up. So this contrast is, uh, yeah, it's very, very And I imagine even the, um, even the act of giving back to to freedom back to fly a bird is something something really peculiar and really special i i have a a little ane anecdote um when i came when i went to gap in the um in france close to the alps uh with my parents we went to visit um a recovery center for for animals in general that has got injured and um, they were taken by volunteers and they were uh, rescued and um, raised until they were ready to go back to nature. And um, mm -hmm. actually my mom gave back to nature a hawk and, uh, and that was, that was a, a really nice moment. I still remember, even if it wasn't me, um, it, it's uh, it's something that is it's in my mind i mean it's um so um actually silvia silvia brought us um wow that's a very long message uh i read it to you uh love the story and the amazing contrast between the endless white snowy cold place space behind you Hanske, and the warm tiny hug of your finger around the little creature. Gasoline. Dank ye el. That I cannot pronounce, <laughs> but I think it's that. That's great. That's very kind. Yeah. Thank you, well, Sylvia. Thank you. Gezellig. Gezellig. It's the word. Gezellig. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Dutch. Great. Yeah, she's right. She's right. It's a big contrast. Yeah, that experience. Yeah. And also, Arisha says such a great story. And um, yes, absolutely. It's um, so with this story in mind and with these pictures also, I would like to to play a game with, that I play with everyone, with all my guests. That is about words and. Um, Imagine to be back there and imagine to be up on the mountain. Um, so what, what, um, so that was an adventure. So what, uh, uh, perfume, color, um, 
feeling? What, what was your main feeling up there? What, what yeah, my main... touched your senses? Was the view, <laughs> the listening, was the, well, the palate? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's hard to give one answer, of course, because it's a combination. But I think it was the few or at the few in combination with the feeling that you can be above so much beauty and you can stand there and you did it yourself because there is no any um, machine or something else that, that brought you up there. And you can watch over this endless land, the space. Um, yeah, it feels like kind of a heaven. Of course, the, the weather was amazing the last day so that was a very very lucky thing and also to know that the jingle is below so this combination yeah it was something uh something wow. undescribable <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what's instead the the feeling you you have if i tell you the word um home what about when you think about home? Um, yeah, when I think about home, <laughs> for me, the word home, of course, I have um, my, my friends, my family, which is, is not really the place or the specific um, geographical location, maybe, but for me those people they are my home on the other side if i i am i am happy in a place which can be jungle mountain or wherever it is i can also call it home ah but okay. it That's most of the time it's not it's not the city most of the time or yeah that's really interesting because um, because everyone's fine. I think the word the word home it's it's something specific for everyone. Um, somebody has only one uh, specific place that he he or she calls home. Um, others find home uh, everywhere, and others nowhere. So it's uh, it's really interesting. Or some others everywhere where there are people that they care for so it's it's um it's really interesting to hear that from you and um so you spent more more time in in south america um would you like to tell us um after this great adventure uh, anything looks like boring, but <laughs> um, maybe no, you visit no. other places and so on. Yeah, South America, actually, I, I spent also the last uh, half a year, um, a lot of time in, in the, um, mostly actually in Chile and Argentina, because I was working as a tour guide over there uh, in Patagonia, in um, as well in like, the northern part of Chile, so the Atacama. Um, yes, and those areas, of course, the nature is something so pure and so wild that, yeah, it, it gives a lot of happiness also to work there because most people, or they should be, <laughs> yeah, most tourists also, they are very happy to be in such an environment of pure air of pure nature so yes most of the time i was in argentina and in chile i also spent some time in buenos aires um also because i had some time in between the tours and i wanted to experience a city like buenos aires again to feel how it is again to be in a bigger city uh which was very good but i have to say that i'm more attracted after Yes, after some weeks in a city to go back to the to the nature. South America, of course, it's it's big. Uh, I've been also traveling through Paraguay, for example. It's a very unknown country, 
And a lot of people say it's dangerous. There is not a lot to see. Don't go there, especially in neighbor countries. Paraguay also is a very, very interesting country and uh, it's more tropical. And yeah, so, but I, I can, can continue a long time. So, <laughs> about <laughs> all the continents, <laughs> like Africa, and then we can move to Asia. I'm, su I'm sure. I'm sure. Actually, I'm. No, no, no. Actually, I'm curious to 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 learn uh, from you if you, as you travel so many so many continents and countries, and you work there, and you you visited places, and you and you got in contact with culture and and people and local people. I'm sure. Um, what what is your idea of um, sustainable traveling? Um, sustainable travel. What does it mean for you if you consider yourself um, you're traveling in a sustainable way? And uh, if so, how? Yes, it's a very important question, especially it becomes more and more um, uh, under the, the news. Eh? How, how would you say that in this time as well? Um, of course, the, the thing that taking airplanes, etc., and I'm doing that myself uh, quite a lot, which is totally not sustainable, only if you would stay maybe a long time in one continent and so, it's better. Um, what I do with the tours, uh, for example, I did a tour in Ethiopia in uh, September. Uh, yeah, I had last September. And... Um, in that case, I, I try to take the people as much as possible to local um, local enterprises, to little companies, to um, startups uh, in, in in the country yeah. itself. So not yeah, not not bigger companies, not the international ones, and so to try to put the money in the in the local economy. Yes, also because I know that country is quite good. So, of course, if you have the connection, you know, kind of, or you, you visited the places, you know where to go to. In that way, uh, sustainable tourism, um, yeah, can be mentioned, like to, to support the, the local economy. So to try to spend the money of yourself, of the tourists, in the local hotels, the families, and uh, local enterprises. Yeah, so I can mention a lot of examples, but um, there's, for example, a lot of little coffee farmers um, who like to prepare coffee, who like to show how it works, and um, strawberry farms. Um, in South America, also a lot of examples, or eating uh, with families, and uh, that's also a great thing. Uh, in that way, um, yeah, tourism gets more spread. I mean, the, the advantages of it. So I think that's a very important uh, uh, part of tourism. And I think especially now we can do that even more. Local foods, uh, yeah, lo lo locality. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. But maybe the bike and walking, of course, uh, trying to diminish the... Um, yeah, the car, the use of cars, and, and yeah, the pollution. I mean, you, you have to use the airplane to get there because that's. I mean, uh, other means of transportation are are not uh, has not been developed uh, in in the past, in the recent uh, years. I, I remember memories from um, a friend in uh, New Zealand. And he talked about his first experience in Europe, and he came by boat to Europe. It took weeks from New Zealand, and that was that was the you know the most affordable and and efficient way to get there at that time. Um, I'm sure before I was born, but um, it, that 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 means that 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 is significant to tell us um, how. Also, the offer of means of transportation changed, and that we can also change it. I think according to our behaves, um, behaviors, um, if we choose or 
uh, one or the other, especially on the on the place. If we choose to rent a car uh, or if we choose to hire a bike, I mean, that's uh, we can make a difference. That's a big difference we can make in the place, uh, especially also because uh, usually car hiring car companies are, I mean, mostly international and uh, all over the world. And so they don't the money don't stay there. And instead hire by having bikes or hiking with the guide of course there's the chance uh, if you know with which um with whom to go um to to help the local economy i think so, so arisha ask uh says yes um when are you coming to asia she's asking ah yes because arisha is living in singapore Yes, ah. thank you for your invitation. <laughs> I have to plan my bike trip to Asia. This is the way. This is the the time to do that. I think it will not be <laughs> yes. by by an airplane. It will be by the Silk Route. So I will come like sooner or later. Yeah, maybe on the bike. Wow, that's that's really cool. Um, on terms of sustainability, um. Did you have, because I remember last week and the week before we talk about some projects and some ways of doing um, voluntary uh, volunteering or um, volunteer work in places as a holiday or as a job. Uh, either ways, Arisha says always and always welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. And um, so did you have any experience in Africa or in other countries about um, volunteering? Yes, I, I did actually. My main volunteering was in Ethiopia. Um, yes, that was um, because also I lived there almost three years. So I did different projects. Um, and one of them was... Um, um, actually, it was in uh, a little town, um, and we were creating and improving like um, the education together with the people there. So we were starting up programs, uh, food programs, but also education programs like reading books, uh, accessibility to to school materials. Um, which was great, which was, uh, which was also really, yeah, something, something like a big good memory now because so many, many, many kids and yeah, <laughs> so, so much laughter and um, so much need also eh, for, yeah, a lot of, lots of things. Um, then another thing was uh, working in the microfinance and also doing some voluntary projects there. That was as well in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And besides, uh, in Nepal, I did my uh, bachelor thesis. So I spent um, five months on a high altitude ma um, town on 3,500 meters. But I got used to it because after three months, <laughs> so <laughs> in the high Himalaya, yes, a little, little wow. middle aged town. Yeah, something else. <laughs> and I did research about the me uh, glacier melting there. Um, but another thing was also uh, working at the school over there. And um, yeah, there I, I was the only like um, outsider at the moment. So it was pretty funny. And um, yeah, <laughs> me appearing there, but they respect, like they have this Buddhism culture. And this is another kind of culture. Tibetan Buddhism, so they are very, very polite and respectful and so on, and they treat you exactly like them, like the same. Um, so that was wonderful. So it was a very good experience. Volunteering, yeah, with the kids as well over there. <laughs> and and definitely you're, you're used to high altitude. I mean, to live there and to hike and to, to breathe uh, there. My, my experience, I don't know, in recent years, I never went so high and in recent years I did a couple of trips actually well, daily hike um, actually the last was for my birthday 
last October, and I got mountain sick uh, because I went. I reached the uh, three thousand. Um, it was about two thousand two thousand nine hundred, and I spent a couple of hours up there. Uh, the terrain was pretty difficult because there were uh, there, there was already snow. And so I had we had some difficulties uh, to 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 move, and we did we spent extra time there. And then when I got down, I totally got sick, and uh, and I spent the, the evening in my bed. So <laughs> so I'm not really really trained to that for that, but I'm sure you are. Probably you also will after some days. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, it can be the first yeah, day, yeah. it can be hard. Yeah. Actually. Um I have another question for you. Um and then we have uh, some questions from our audience. Um what um so you you, you <laughs> it's 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 hard to say, but you um, so you're spending your life traveling across continents and countries and having several experience abroad. Um, what what do you think is the best taken? What's the best um, you you find yourself learning um, while going across uh, going through these experiences? Is that on the cultural side, on the landscape side, on the, uh, the experiences with people, or what else? Yes, it's um, it's also hard to give one answer, but I will mention the combination <laughs> which is most visible for me. Um, uh, first of all, I think um, all the experiences in different countries, different contexts and cultures make you aware that, um, um, that of course, we are all the same. We are all people. We're all the same on the world. But with so many different backgrounds and educations and, and cultures that um, it's... Um, from the outside if you're not in that context it's very easy to judge or to um yeah to give your own um backgrounds maybe uh, the most visible for you the most easy to follow um yeah the you put it maybe as a as a normal thing and when you go over borders you actually see that there are so many different people, and that's so interesting. Um, that that's one thing I, I learned a lot. That uh, every person is so different, and uh, yeah, through all these combinations, very anthropologic uh, story actually. And um, yeah, this is like a big curiosity uh, for me to hear the stories of, of those people and also their opinion, their background, and. Without without any judgment, um, uh, which you learn of that. So yeah, and um, mm -hmm. let me see, Ellen, are you still there? Yes, yeah, I am. <laughs> and I totally agree with you, Renske. It's uh, for my experience. That's that's basic. That, that's kind of similar. Uh, I discover how are the people that makes a place special and are the people that can give you the best um, gift to bring home. If you also like Simone, um, our guest in the first uh, live said, well, if you go uh, away from home and you, and you travel and you don't want to learn anything, you, you're not interested in what it's around you, probably you'll come back the same way you went out. But if you if you open yourself to um, what's coming to you, because so many things are coming your way, are crossing your way, your path uh, while you're traveling, uh, most probably you will get 
um, something really significant in, in return that will possibly enrich you and at least give you expertise um, that you can share with others. And great storytelling as you did, uh, as you're doing today with us. Actually. So we, we, um, we have about 10 minutes, Renske. Um, I have some other questions. Um, and one, actually, is yes. totally about this that you just mentioned. So your way of traveling and uh, what you can take home. And is, is, is pretty easier than the previous one. So do you have any advice for people who would like to take um, or to do something similar to what you're doing? Either yes, having certainly. Because the growth, sound having, is a little. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sorry, the sound went off a little by some. Okay, I yeah. repeat. The can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, I can. Sorry. Yes, I um, certainly I have some advice. Um, actually, first of all, <laughs> um. You, um, this world, like, is, um, of course, it's a, it's a very, very uh, enriched world. So if you want to learn something about the world and your life, but you're actually also thinking, yes, but maybe it's dangerous, maybe it's too difficult, um, how do I do it? Um, one thing is to not to think too much, but... Um, follow like a feeling that you, for example, you want to explore some region actually, but you think it's maybe too far, it's this and that. Just try it and uh, you will see that there is so many surprises and that um, actually when you are doing that and when you go somewhere uh, without too much plan, but with a good uh, attitude and an open attitude, you will have you will get so much happiness and you will see so much of, um, yeah, of an area. Of course, um, it's not always easy to travel and work around uh, like um, mm -hmm. even I do because you have to be really flexible. Uh, you have to, um, yeah, try to be like creative in some ways. Um, also, especially in this moment, I came in Portugal and I thought, okay, and now <laughs> the work was gone. And so, so I was actually going to take care of a property of a land in Portugal. And I found this woman who needed someone for her property. Um, so yes, for in some way, there is always some, maybe sometimes some luck. You have to make some, yeah some effort for that but yeah just do it and uh, you will see what happens and if something goes wrong it's also not the end of the world <laughs> at least don't fall in a volcano crater then everything <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's that's a good good uh, a good suggestion a actually translating your your thoughts in an example that you just mentioned before is it might sound like this um Tell me if I'm wrong, but you really want to climb a re uh, volcano in South America? Just buy, buy the, the flight ticket and go and do it. But, of course, be prepared. I mean, get informed and um, prepare yourself for what you're going to do. But don't think too much. You really want to do things and yeah. go forward to it. No, exactly. Don't put too many constraints. Indeed, you need to have the financial resource first, but then if you're creative, you can make something in a not too expensive way or, yeah. Don't climb it all alone, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, I admit I learned from, from you uh, this because I, I, I am a really... Um, detailed person and uh, I, I sometimes over overthink on scheduling and uh, technical skills and gears and so on and preparation and scheduling that I forget uh, other things, other stuff that is more much more important. That is the spirit and the, the willingness to go and to do something. 
So, um, then you talk about, before you talk about uh, organizing a bike trip in Asia, but I think I know, um, a little bird told me, actually, that in Italian is un uccellino mi ha detto, that you are also planning a bike trip uh, across Italy and is uh, more even more interesting uh, this period that we just reopened our borders and um, now it's possible to to go back and forth again. Um, how did you spend your this this time of limitation you spent in Portugal working in a farm? So what would you like to do next? Yes, uh, actually, I was normally like as well like you. I would be leading tours actually at this moment in Italy and also some in the Azor in Portugal. Yes, okay, so this is not possible anymore. So, but there is many other options. Indeed, a different way. Um, so actually, at this moment, I also I'm teaching some hours online, which is a good way to yeah to be a little bit stable. But uh, yes, I still want to go to Italy because Italy can be actually talking about how maybe it becomes my home more for <laughs> for the future because I love Italy as well. Um, and I'm also doing some trips there, as you know. And yes, so my plan is I want to go back to Italy to, to cycle there. Yes, and to cycle, I think it's a great way, especially oh. now, because, yes, of course, you're all the time outside and you don't have to be close to people. Um, you can cycle around them. <laughs> no, you can, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sustainable way, of course, to travel. And now the borders are opening again. It's um, more or less, it should be possible in a few weeks uh, to go cycling. That's amazing. Yeah, so I have my bicycle prepared. So, so if I got it right, you are suggesting also other people that maybe never thought about um, going on holiday or do a bike tour of doing it. I mean, just try. If you, if you like, yeah. just contact a, a bike company and, and, uh, and try it for the first time. Then you can organize... I don't know. You can organize yourself if you if you try this. It's good, but well, I always suggest for the first uh, times to to solve uh, any possible troubles, uh, like um, going with a guide or or somebody. Is not your case, but um, yeah, Arita is asking a suggestion. Actually, she asked it at the beginning but I wanted to bring it up when we were talking about Italy because she really hoped to have a chance one day to travel with you, Renske, and that's awesome. Uh, most positive person I have ever met with a wonderful soul. <laughs> the question is, that were the compliments. Uh, question is, if not to travel far and stay in Italy, which place is the best in your view? That's an interesting question, yeah. Thank you, Arisha. That's very kind, your message. Um, yes. So the Which best place, place in Italy you would like also to, to cycle this time or you've cycled in the past and you, and you suggest? Yeah, actually, I have to say that I, I really, um, of course, I love as well my home country. It's my home country. There's a lot of things, good things to say. But I do love a lot like the Alpine region, um, the Alps, um, actually also the sea. But uh, the, <laughs> the mountains, like the mountain areas are actually number one still and that's why i would say like the yeah the alps uh it's it's possible to to get there uh, overland um in europe um because for now it will be too far and too difficult to be also in other parts of the world but around our own areas we have so much beauty 
even in the Netherlands, now I'm in minus three meters, more or less. But um, yes, <laughs> I think I would say the, the mountainous area. So maybe it's like, who knows, Spain as well. Uh, the Pyrenees, the, the Alps, Switzerland or oh. Slovenia. Mm -hmm. or... Personally, I, I, I would also to suggest Arisha about a place in Italy uh, that got in contrast with yours, but as far as I, I most, I live most of the year in the, in the Dolomites now, uh, very close, okay. just uh, in my courtyard. Um, I like to change landscape for a bit, and um, I might suggest um, the south part of Italy, the heel of the boot, let's say that we call Apulia in foreign languages and Puglia in Italian. That is, has amazed me several years ago and I still go there once in a year, once a year, anytime I try and I can because I, I really love to cycle even off season. So I mean, in mid seasons, um, I mean, spring and autumn. And maybe in summer, if you go to summer in Italy, yes, we, you can go, you can enjoy the mountains. Hiking, biking. It's there true. Are, there are trails yeah. for everyone from the, yeah. the beautiful bike path on, at the bottom of the valleys uh, that leads then to the beginning of the trails, the more technical trails or hiking trails. Then with these, you can go up to the refugees, um, uh, to the huts, what we call mountain hut, uh, rifugi, and uh, then there are alpine ways for uh, technical and skilled hikers as you are, Renske, you can uh, get a rope and, and climb on ice or on rock as well. So, ah, also we have somebody from Puglia, I guess, because uh, Andrea wrote us fantastic Puglia, and yeah, Puglia is wonderful. I'm actually also going there. Yeah, this year. <laughs> that would be probably be the, the end of your your bike trip because uh, the end of Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Lecce is wonderful. Ah, Lecce is wonderful. I mean, by meaning the end of Italy, I mean uh, it's the heel of the boot. So farther you can go. Actually, there's a point in Puglia called Finisterre. Um, from Latin, you can guess, is the end of the, the earth, the, the, end, the end of the land. And um, it's really nice. You see also uh, you are in between two seas, and that's, that's pretty nice. But in the Dolomites, it's plenty of places to, to ride. And I, I remember you, you lived a little bit uh, for a short time uh, close to Lake Garda as well. Correct? Yeah, it's true. Yes. So That's there fair. you can have yeah. water and mountains at the same time. Yeah, That's you can fair. find so many wonderful places in Italy, but also in other countries with Italy. <laughs> yeah, and cities as well. Yeah, Napoli is also great. Bologna, yeah. And the food. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Great, great. Uh, okay, so cool. Well, the this hour has flown by. It's uh, it's already one hour, and a little more. We are talking. Um, please feel free to to ask any further questions because, unfortunately, uh, this is gonna be the end of um, our rubric, our uh, weekly appointment. I'm gonna stop. Uh, thank you, Luisa. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you, Matteo, Andrea, and Arisha, and everyone who has has followed this, even in English today, um, yes. for the for the past weeks. That was real fun, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, have fun is is the best thing. I hope you had fun as well, Rensk Renske. And uh, I did a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys from Arisha as well. Um, 
so yes, um, I wish you, I definitely wish you to come to Italy. I hope we can meet um, during your bike trip across Italy. I'm sure you, you'll have to visit other friends as well across the boot, what we call um, Italy kindly, the boot. And um, I wish you all the best to start back traveling and uh, working uh, soon as um, as teacher you're already doing, but also as a uh, tour guide. And uh, we hope we go back to normality, to normal life so soon. Thank you yes, very much. Thank this you. Thank you, Alain. Great, uh, uh, great adventure across continents, across lands. What a better way to end uh, this from <laughs> the bottom of a mountain to the top of a peak to rescuing a bird um, to bring him, her back to life uh, down and fly <laughs> in the sky. And uh, then move to Africa and other continents, planning by trips. What a wonderful life. Eh? <laughs> it's a nice way. Thank you, Alain. Yes, I hope, yes, got everyone comes to Italy again. The borders are open and um, there is so much to enjoy. So thanks for the interview. I was very happy to share. You're very welcome. See you next time, maybe on the road, maybe on the bicycle. Sure, we will meet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good luck, Alain. Yeah, <laughs> Bye, luck everyone. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye-bye. Grazie. Gra